Welcome back to Iron Horse Garage. Today, we're gonna to be doing a four-wheel disc brake conversion on a 67 Mustang. We purchased the Right Stuff kit from Summit Racing. Comes with everything you need to do your conversion, including drilled and slotted rotors, a power booster and dual master cylinder, and a brand new disc brake pedal. So the first thing we need to do is start removing our old components, starting with the brake drums. And we'll need to pop the axles out of the rear to remove all of the backing plates and hardware. So let's get to it. So right now I'm gonna start removing this uh, rear brake drum. Almost everyone you remove, you'll have to hit with a dead blow or some sort of hammer to get it freed up. Cause this one's been sitting for quite a long time. So we'll get to that. We're gonna take this axle out. So there's this access hole here to get to these four nuts on the axle flange and these are 9 16 so we'll just get in there with an impact and zip all four of those out real quick now i'm going to pop this axle out of here there's a lot of people that use a slide hammer i've found if i get these two pry bars on the back of it it pops out of there pretty easy just like that just pull it on out of there. Now I'm gonna take the uh, brake line off of the back. I'm gonna pop this off of here. So in order to remove our emergency brake cable, we have to pop out this clip here. So we'll pop that out now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna get the front of the cable off of this clip here and you just kind of feed it back through just like that and pop it out of that bracket. So we're gonna pop our grease caps off of the front, just with a little pry bar, screwdriver, whatever you have. And then you have a cotter pin in here that you need to bend and get that out of the way, along with a nut retainer. And then we'll pull our nut that holds the bearing in place this one was pretty loose so it's a good thing we're doing this and then we'll pop the whole drum off with the bearing so now we're going to remove our four nuts that hold the backing plate onto the spindle and this kit actually reuses the spindle so we will be leaving those in place so we'll need to remove our hard brake line here, typically with these older cars, if they haven't been changed out and sitting for a while, you end up stripping these out, which is what happened on the other side. To get this thing out of here quickly, I'm just gonna cut the soft line and remove our backing plate. And there's our brake assembly. So we're just gonna clean these up and get it ready to mount our new stuff on. And these spindles are actually in really good shape. So now that we have everything cleaned up and ready to go, we're going to start installing our hardware. That does come with pretty good instructions. The problem is that the company mislabeled the two caliper bracket. The correct one is actually labeled left and goes on like that. Not a good job. So if you get a kit that's labeled incorrectly, it could be a big problem at home for do-it-yourselfers. So just something to look out for. And then our dust shields on over the caliper brackets. Then you'll need to insert the grade eight bolts with the bolt head facing out so it doesn't interfere with your brake parts. And obviously the longer one goes through the steering knuckle. Then you'll tighten these babies up to about 35 to 45 foot pounds. Now we're going to be packing these wheel bearings. And uh, one of the main mistakes a lot of people make when doing their wheel bearings in their car. Instead of actually packing this, which I'll show you here in a second, they'll just throw a layer of grease around the outside in the race and throw them together. And that tends to burn out your wheel bearings pretty quick. We'll show you the correct way to do it. So we take a good scoop of grease here, get your bearing, and then you're just gonna push down on that and scoop it into the rollers there just like that until it starts coming out the top. I always like to do a little bit more 
just so you make sure that you have that really packed in there. And then you just go all the way around and pack the whole thing. Now that we've got our wheel bearing packed correctly, uh, this is what it should look like. As you see, it's all filled in in the rollers all the way up to the top. Spread a layer along the outside and then install it. You're good to go. One thing to make sure of is that we put the bearing in before we put this grease seal in. Otherwise, you will not be able to get this bearing in and you'll have to replace that seal and try it again. Now that that's all greased up, put that in there. Then you take your grease seal here. Make sure you get it on there even. And then we take a seal driver, place that on there, and just hit it till it bottoms out. And there it is. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this rotor installed on this spindle. And we be careful, make sure to line up that inner bearing. We may have a problem. We got our rotors from Summit. Their customer service was pretty great. They sent us the wrong rotors the first time around, but here we are now, we got the correct set. We're now going to get the rotors installed. Before we do that, this backing plate has to be trimmed. Uh, so we'll have to take it down to about here. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Little more. Now we're going to throw our bearings in again. I'm gonna throw a little bit more grease on them, get these installed and the seal in, and we'll get this rotor on. Now that we have this on here, we'll go ahead and get our outer wheel bearing on. So we're gonna install our nut and our washer. And then we're gonna tighten this down as we spin the rotor to kind of seat the bearings. And we'll tighten this down a fair amount for right now, just so we can get them bearings set in the right place. Now that we have the bearings set in the right spot and seated, uh, we're going to just kind of set our drag so I always like to tighten this nut up all the way and then I'll back it off until I get the drag that I kind of desire from there. So we'll back this off just a little bit more. There we go. And now we will get this caliper installed. And then make sure we get our cotter pin installed. That way this nut doesn't try and back off on us. We have our front brake assembly all installed and we are ready to move on to the next thing. I will now be installing our rear axle seals. I'm just going to put some sealant around this lip in here. Now we're going to get this thrown in there. We start it and make sure that it's centered. You don't want to start one side of it first. You want to make sure that it's all mostly centered. That way it goes in a little bit smoother. Take a seal driver of some sorts and just start tapping it in. When installing this kit, it comes with new brackets for this axle flange. So we will have to cut off this old bracket here and it comes with this new bracket to mount the disc brakes too. Okay, so right now I am greasing up the splines and then I'm also going to throw some on the seal. That way we can prevent any tearing when we throw these axles in. Now we're just gonna slide the axle in. Make sure and be careful on that seal. We don't wanna let it rest on the seal itself just to prevent that from bending the seal. Now we're doing this very carefully here because we don't want to 
chance messing up those splines in there at all. Now that we have our axles installed, I will be putting together this caliper mounting bracket. It has spacers here to set the depth of the caliper where it's gonna sit. Manual says to go ahead and use the medium size spacers, so we'll go ahead and get that tightened up. Okay, and in order to mount this, it requires two eighth inch shims. Those go on here just to make up for the amount of bearing that's sticking out here. And we're just use the factory axle flange bolts and the nuts. So we'll just get those thrown in there and tighten it down. Now that we have the bracket installed, we will be installing the rotor. Slide that on there. And then we'll throw on three lug nuts just so it holds that rotor tied up against the hub there. That way we're making sure that our caliper is on correctly. And now we will install our caliper onto the bracket. We'll pop the screws out of here, the bolts, and make sure our pads are sitting correctly. So we're gonna be removing the old master cylinder. Obviously we have a couple of lines that go in there in these fittings, so we need to take those off. And there's two bolts going into the firewall that we have to pull out. You also have to disconnect this piece hooked to your brake pedal on the inside. Right now I am removing the old brake pedal so that we can install the new one that works with the new master cylinder. As you can tell, there's quite a difference in pedals between the old and new, a lot longer on the new one and a wider surface area for your foot. What we've discovered on this longer pedal is there's a couple of holes up where this mounts and this goes in the higher hole when the other one was down low. And what that's doing is it's making a contact issue up underneath the dash, as you can see, and uh, interfering with the pedal moving freely. So we're gonna go ahead and grind that down a little bit. This is where the old pedal mounted and we need to mount the new one way up here and there's already a factory hole drilled. So in order to get our power booster mounted we need to remove this bolt and this bolt and we'll also need to drill a hole down here. We have our master cylinder bolted in place, nice and clean in here. This is our old pedal, but on the power booster rod, there's a lot of space between the cutter pin and the pedal itself. And uh, I don't want there to be any slop in there. This is the washer that was on the old one. Drill out this bushing, cut it down, and take up the space with that bushing so we got a nice tight fit. Moving on to the master cylinder. This is our new master cylinder here. The kit comes with these two smaller lines and those have to be crossed in order to function properly. This is our new proportioning valve. So this proportioning valve needs to face with these fittings toward the driver's side of the car, this big fitting towards the rear of the car. This fitting is for the rear brakes and these two are for the front brakes. That mounts to the bracket underneath and the bracket will mount to the outside of the master cylinder. Here's another problem we found. The new proportioning valve, the fitting is bigger than the actual rear brake line. This would be the size of the rear brake line, which is 3 16 and there is no bushing or any way to adapt this that was included in the kit. So what we had to do is rob this line from our old master cylinder setup. This is a 5 16 flare fitting and that goes directly into the rear. So using a small tubing cutter, I'm gonna cut this flared end off so we can slide our fitting off to reuse it. And then we will put this onto the line in the car and be able to tie into our proportioning valve. This is the rear brake line that we will be also cutting and removing this fitting. So this is our 
flaring tool. We're going to do a double flare on the line. Uh, start by inserting the 3 16 die. We'll put it on the 3 16 slot. Got to make sure you get these nice and tight. Clamp this down and get our first flare. Then we'll remove the die, press it this way. And then we'll press it down and get our external flare. And that's a perfect double flare and we can get our master cylinder hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and wire in our new sensor and get this master cylinder put in. So I'm going to tighten up our rear fitting first before I install this. That way I'm not fighting it while it's hooked up. We're going to finish tightening up the passenger side front line. I'll tighten up the driver's side front line. Well, now that that part's buttoned up and looking clean, let's move on to the next step. So our grease caps are a little bit too tight to go into the rotor, so we had to trim a little notch out of those things to get them to fit. And now we're going to go ahead and put them in. And they still don't fit good. You have to kind of massage them in there. So these calipers would normally require a banjo fitting. This kit for the front calipers comes with a straight hose and I'm just going to use a crush washer on that and tighten her up. So these are the clips from the old brake lines. We have to bend those, take them off and reuse them. So we're going to put them onto the new brake line, crimp that down. So we'll slide our new hose into the old bracket and then we'll put our retainer clip in to hold it in place. And there we go. Well, now we're just going to tighten up our brake line now that our clip's in place. And that concludes the front brake lines and now we're going to move on to the rear. We're going to start installing the brake lines on our rear brakes. So this one comes with a banjo fitting. So we'll tighten that down. I already have this side in and kind of eyeballed where we're going to need to weld our brackets. And also this whole job, this whole process, we've been having to bend these brake lines around to get the right angles and everything else. So that'll sit in there this way. And I'll weld these brackets here onto the axle to hold our brake line. That'll have it on both sides. We're going to hook these up on our calipers. So this is your banjo fitting. It has a hole there that transfers fluid from your line. Just make sure you have a copper crush washer in between both pieces when you put that together. And we'll tighten that into the caliper. Then the brake line goes up to our bracket that we welded onto the axle. And then we'll tighten down the metal brake line into the fitting. Put in your clip. Under clip in place. We're going to hose these down with a little bit of brake cleaner just in case there's any grease or anything on your brakes. Now we're going to get some fluid in this thing and bleed the brakes. Normally you would bench bleed your master cylinder, but we're going to do this the old fashioned way. The instructions don't specify what brake fluid to use, but we're going to use dot three. Now we are pumping the brakes, trying to get all the air out. Keep pumping, Thomas. Go ahead. Starting the bleeding process, we've already bled the rear brakes and now I'm onto the front and we got a guy in the car pumping them manually. Let's see if we get any air out of here. Oh, that fluid looks nice and clear and we've went around the car a few times now to try to make sure all, all the air is out and I think that's going to wrap it up. Here are the new parking brake cables that come in the kit and these things are way too short to use the original cable. So the way we fix that issue without making custom cables as we reused our old parking brake cables, removed the spring that was on the end of those and installed them into the new brackets. And now our parking brake is fully functional. And now just like factory, the parking brake cable runs the full length of the car. Let's get our new 15 inch wheels and tires on the car. So one thing to remember with this kit or any disc brake kit is they require 15 inch wheels or larger. Let's see what these brakes are all about. 
Hey, this Mustang's got some major stopping power now. All right, guys, that's it for this time. We tackled a four-wheel disc brake conversion on this classic 67 Mustang. We outfitted it with a kit from the Right Stuff brand. And let me tell you, I gave this pony some extra stopping power. Well, we had our challenges with this project. We ran into a few cracked parts when we got them. And there was quite a bit of modification to do to make this kit work. That's right. And because of unexpected issues on this kit, I wouldn't recommend it to your average DIY mechanic. Took quite a bit of know-how and problem solving to get this kit dialed in. But in the end, this was a great upgrade for our customer and they got a lot of bang for their buck with this brake kit. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode.